For the past few years, I've been gradually increasing the amount of seed saving that I've been doing, returning to this important part of the cycle of growing vegetables that I had been so interested in when I first started growing. This started with some of the easier crops to save seeds from, including lots of different varieties of tomatoes and green beans, as well as bulking up on the quantities of peas, broad beans, and runner beans for the usual varieties that I've been growing. And a few years ago, I also grew a big batch of carrots specifically for seed saving. But this year, I decided to do even more, to expand the types of vegetables and the amount of seeds that I was producing. And scaling up my seed saving activities and saving seeds from a lot of the trickier types of vegetables requires a better understanding of what different vegetables need, uh, additional growing spaces, and figuring out some techniques to make some of the processes easier and more effective. I have quite enjoyed this additional focus on seed saving in the gardens and have saved a lot of seeds and have learned a lot, but I'm still not sure where it's all going and what will happen to all these seeds. For all the beans, peas, and tomato seeds that I've saved in the past, and even more this season, it is fairly easy to save some seeds from the general crop, as I grow them to produce the pods, seeds, and fruit that the plant naturally want to produce. I just need to avoid eating them, and to wait a little longer, or process the seeds a bit, and to know when cross-pollination may be an issue. But with a lot of other vegetables, seed saving is a different phase of the plant growth entirely, and eating the crop typically means that you can't save seeds from it, or at least it means that you need to leave the plants for an extended period of time before getting the seeds. With so many other things going on in the gardens, and to avoid messing around with the other planting plans, I find it easier to separate out the seed saving crop, to move it away from the other explorations. Up until this season, I haven't tried saving seeds from lettuce or other types of leafy vegetables, as I have generally wanted to harvest most of the leaves and pulled out any plants that showed early signs of bolting, because early bolting was not a characteristic that I wanted to encourage in the seeds that I saved. But this year, I decided to grow rocket or arugula plants in grow bags, specifically for seed saving, sowing them earlier in the spring in one of the polytunnels and moving them outside as they got bigger and started to produce a flower stalk. I like the idea of using bags or movable containers for seed saving like this, as it is more flexible and separate from the usual planting plans for the main garden spaces, but I underestimated how large the plants would get. There were lots of insects visiting the flowers, but I wasn't worried about cross-pollination in this case, as apparently rocket won't cross with other brassica species. I wanted to grow quite a few plants, to make sure that the diversity of the genetics of the variety was included for seed saving, but I had probably left too many plants in each grow bag, which became quite crowded, and I struggled to keep them watered. And I should have supported the heavy seed stalks with a better kind of structure or frame. I wasn't so successful at gathering up the seed pods as they dried, and many burst open, losing a lot of the seeds to the ground. But the process of potting and winnowing to separate out the seeds was fairly easy, and I still ended up with about 100 grams of rocket seeds, which will last quite a while. I also grew one variety of radish for seed saving in the same way as the rocket plants, but I did thin to fewer plants per bag. And I was really surprised how big the roots got and how long they grew before they started to develop a seed head, especially compared to the usual dense sowings in the gardens, which often prompts plants to bolt quite quickly. These big roots eventually developed huge flower stalks, most of which fell over, so some kind of support frame would be useful next time. And the seed pods took a lot longer to develop than I had thought, and I only cut off the seed stalks in September, five months after sowing the seeds, and hung them under cover to cure some more and dry. Even after drying the pods inside for a while, they were still fairly difficult to break open, at least compared to the brittle seed pods of the rocket plants. There were way too many pods to break open individually, and I researched a few different options, but ended up stomping on the seed pods with clean boots inside a big pot to crush them enough so that most of the seeds were released. I then used a battery-powered blower to blow off the chaff and dust, which was a little bit trickier than with the larger bean seeds that I'd cleaned in the same way, but doing it on a very windy day helped. I probably lost a fair amount of seeds along the way, but it was relatively quick and easy, and I ended up with about 150 grams of radish seeds, which will last quite a few seasons. We have been growing six or seven different types of lettuce, often mixed together in a single sowing, and I quite like one of the varieties, a small cost lettuce type. So earlier this year I decided to transplant 12 immature plants from a mixed sowing of lettuce heads into a space in the side bed of one of the polytunnels. 
The flowers of lettuce plants are apparently self-pollinating, so a possible lack of insects in the polytunnel would not have been a problem. And it seems I could have saved seeds from several varieties at a time, especially if I could give them a bit of distance. But I haven't saved seeds from lettuce before, and I was not sure how they would do in this warmer and more humid environment, but I figured that protection from the wind and rain would help. The plants seemed to grow well, even if they were initially stressed by the transplanting, and eventually produced tall seed stalks with numerous unremarkable flowers that opened in stages rather than all at once. I didn't really know how easy it would be to collect the seeds, and tried picking a few by hand as they matured, but this would have been really time consuming, and because of a lack of wind and rain, I was more comfortable leaving the stalks until most of the seed heads were dried. Then I cut off the large clusters and hit them against the insides of a clean tote container, and I was surprised how quickly a lot of the seed pods emptied, filling the bottom of the tote with lots of chaff, fluff, and seeds. It was quite easy to use the blower to gently blow out most of the lighter fluff, but the chaff and some of the seed pods that had broken off were a bit more difficult to blow out without also blowing out a lot of the seeds. I tried using a colander to sieve out some of the larger pieces, but ended up picking out a lot of the chaff by hand in order to re end up with relatively clean seeds. No doubt I could have got a lot more seed if I had used better methods for harvesting and cleaning, but I still ended up with over 100 grams of lettuce seeds from this one variety, and assuming that it's good quality seed, that is more than I could ever use before it gets too old to germinate. We ended up with a lot of fairly large beetroot in one of the gardens last year, of an open pollinated variety that I've grown for a while, and last autumn I decided to transplant 20 of these roots into the separate bed beside the older polytunnel. I knew that I probably would never need the amount of seeds that this number of plants would produce, especially as I'm not convinced that this is the best variety, as I haven't been able to do a proper variety trial yet. But I have read that with this type of wind pollinated plant, saving seeds from too few plants can cause problems with inbreeding over time. And we had a lot of large roots and a fair amount of space, so I thought I'd try it out. The original seeds for these plants were sown in early summer last year, then transplanted in early winter into a separate seed saving bed, where they regrew to produce tall flower stalks this year, and the seeds were only ready to be collected this autumn, more than 16 months after the original sowing. The seed stalks became really tangled, and I started collecting some of the seeds as they dried, but found that untangling the mass of stems caused a lot of the ripe seeds to break off and fall to the ground. So I waited until most of the seeds were dried, cut off all the seed stalks, and hung them to dry, protected from the rain. I wasn't sure about the easiest way to remove the seeds, but I found that I could use a glove to roughly brush the bundle of seed stalks over a tote container, and this removed most of the seeds, which seemed good enough. I was able to use a colander to further clean the seed clusters, with the chaff and smaller seeds falling through the holes to be discarded, and I removed a lot of the remaining twigs by hand, and ended up with a huge number of seeds. Going through the original plants and carefully picking out a lot of the largest seeds would have been an easier way to get a relatively small number of seeds that I would need in the gardens for the next few years. And I could also select only the largest seeds. But by doing it in this way and collecting a lot more of the seeds, I ended up with over 400 grams of beetroot seeds from this one variety, which is a huge amount of seeds. More than enough to share and to use for growing microgreens, which will go through a lot of them. I also transplanted 40 extra leek seedlings last summer into the spare bed beside where the beetroot would end up, and the leeks grew all last year and over the winter, and sent out a tall flower stalk this summer. I probably could have planted them a lot closer together, and I ended up having to tie up a lot of the very tall and beautiful flower stalks to prevent them from falling over. These large globes of numerous flowers attracted a lot of insects to spread the pollen around, and I kept an eye out for other leek plants that were bolting or going to seed in the surrounding area to reduce the risk of cross-pollination. I was surprised how long the seed heads seemed to take to mature, and as the wet weather of autumn came, I cut off half of the seed heads and hung them to dry in a windy shed. But a couple of months later, it seems that they, I may have cut them too early, as they don't seem to contain a lot of seeds. And the seed heads that I left on the plant seem to be in better shape, and the seeds seem to be forming, but not ready to harvest. But now that it is November, and more growth is unlikely, I cut off the rest of the seed heads that were still in decent shape to dry in the warmth of the house. So I still don't know if I'll get any good quality seeds out of these plants after all this time. And I think next year I will try to grow leeks for seed saving in one of the polytunnels, where the extra warmth might speed up the development of the seeds.
I just need to make sure that the plants are close to the polytunnel entrance so that the flowers are more likely to be visited by insects. So after the season, I have ended up with loads of pea and bean seeds and more than enough seeds from quite a few different varieties of green beans to add to my expanding collection. I have lots of rocket and radish seeds, more than enough for quite a few years, and a huge number of lettuce and beetroot seeds from one variety. And assuming that they're all good quality viable seeds, I won't need to save any more seeds for quite a few years, at least from these varieties. But I'm not yet sure if I'll end up with any decent leek seeds this year. I plan to store a decent sample of all the seeds I saved in the freezer for longer term storage, especially with the different varieties of beans, and to set aside enough seeds of the varieties I like to grow for a few years. And then anything that is left over, I will divide up into envelopes for sharing with other growers in the community. Sowing seeds to produce microgreens is probably a good way to get, make use of the excess amounts of beet seeds, and even with the rocket, radish, and lettuce seeds and extra bean seeds can end up in the kitchen, so there isn't really an issue of waste with any of this. But I'm still a bit wary of the amount of effort, space, and time that is taken up with all of this. And in a lot of cases, it's just easier to buy in a lot of seeds and store them properly. But I also think that this is a useful thing to do, to explore how to save seeds from so many different types of plants, growing enough to preserve the varieties, and knowing when cross-pollination may be an issue, especially after having serious issues with cross-pollinated squash seeds that I bought this season. And I like the challenge of figuring out methods and techniques for supporting the plants, and harvesting and cleaning the seeds in ways that are appropriate to the scale that I'm working at. And producing such an abundance of seeds definitely increases resilience, especially when there is enough to share. But in the end, the value that I've put into all of this work will only be realized if these seeds are actually used to grow crops. And I really hope that a lot more people in my community will start growing a lot more of their own vegetables. Because even now, at the beginning of what will likely end up being many years of seed saving and exploration, I already have too many seeds. <laughs>